All right, so hands down, the MVP of this tournament of power has to be Android 17. But that MVP comes with a big ass asterisk because there's no way in hell that an Android who has a limited, it will be it, perpetual amount of power was able to take on basically a god of destruction. Like when did this nigga do any kind of training to get as strong as he was in this tournament? He's definitely on steroids. Like this is MVP like Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds type MVP with a huge ass asterisk steroids dragon ball type steroids but whatever let's just get into this episode 127 review so at the beginning of dragon ball super episode 127 you hear android 17 voice at the beginning saying that he has a special plan and previously his special plan has been to just run into somebody as you saw with topo he put his back right to Topo, put his shield up, and had Gohan blast him with the Kamehameha wave to try to knock Topo off the arena. So I was thinking that maybe he would do some shit like that, not go full Al-Qaeda and blow himself up the way he did at the end of the episode. That shit was, whew, that was crazy. I, I, I did not see that coming whatsoever. But um, the way that the episode starts off with... <clears throat> At 17, well, Jiren number one is powering up. Why does he have to need to power up? I don't know. Because Jiren's been airing out Goku and Vegeta with East the entire tournament of power. The only time he ever had to struggle was when Goku went Ultra Instinct. And that was, he couldn't touch him. And Goku was able to tap him, but they was just love taps. He wasn't really doing much damage to Jiren, as you saw when he when Goku fought Kefla. He couldn't, he could hit Kefla, he could knock her back, but he couldn't really do any lasting damage. So why the hell did Jiren had the need to power up? I don't know. But I would have to think that he did that. He went to like, it looked like he went Super Saiyan God, didn't he? He had like the flame, the red flames around him, just like Goku does when he goes Super Saiyan God, his base form of it. So I'm assuming that Jiren went his Super Saiyan God form. I don't know what to call it, but his God mode, just to intimidate Goku, Vegeta, and 17 because... He has always been stronger than them. He can just flick them, just one punch man flick them, and they're going to fly across the map and then dart right back at him. So he starts off by powering up, and it was a really great scene to watch Vegeta, 17, and Goku just jump this guy, like just throwing six hands at him at all times, just, just going at it, going at it, going at it. But Jiren being the G that he is, is able to just fend them off and blast them all away. Jiren being the G that he is, was able to just fend them off and blast them all away. And, uh, you know, side note, Goku, as you, well, as we saw throughout the entire series of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, and now Super, Goku has this effect on whatever enemy that he fights, they end up fighting on his team. Goku ends up fighting with two people who were trying their best to kill him and ends up having to fight with them in order to save the world. So I thought that was pretty cool to see Vegeta and 17 and Goku working together to fight this common enemy. It'd have been even cooler if Frieza could join the fray, but Frieza is basically Space Hitler and won't be doing anything like that anytime soon. It was it was good enough to see that he actually worked with Gohan to trap Dispo in that cage, but that's because Dispo was fucking him up, so he had to do what he had to do. But anyway, back to Jiren, back to 127. They 17 has been the first one to actually do some damage. How? I don't, he was no stronger than a Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan 1 back in the Cell stage. And he got wished back to life with no power-ups. Just having... He's supposed to have the bomb removed from him when he got wished back to life. That's what that's what the conditions were in the wish back 18, right? But I guess he got wished back off camera, so we don't know. He received no special training whatsoever. All he did was just train with animals and protect them and whatnot. And now he's the power of a Super Saiyan God. Goku and Vegeta had to go through everything they had to they had to go through everything they had to go to in order in order to achieve what they did to become on par with gods. And 17 all he did was just be nice, respect the climate, feed the animals, and he's diesel. So we we saw that being showcased all throughout the episode when he, he's just standing toe to toe having these beam battles with Topo and now having these beam battles against Jiren. It's just sick. But it was a really great scene again to see Vegeta doing his final flash, Goku doing his Kaoken times 20 Kamehameha wave 
and 17 doing his what should be a pussy ass full power wave and just blasting Jiren. But Jiren, like I said, he's been like stronger than everyone this entire time. He just yelled really hard and blasted them all away. Towards the end of the episode, 17 and Jiren had a face off. Whatever perpetual energy that Dr. Jiro invented for, for 17 and 18 and 16, that shit worked. Because every every time 17 got knocked down, he got his ass right back up to seconds later. When he got kicked into the wall, got right back up. When Topo fucking mushed his face, got right back up. Getting blasted by his own Rasengan, point blank, got right back up immediately. Like, what is going on with 17? What kind of power does 17 have? And can Goku acquire this? Like, Goku needs to be asking these questions at the end of the tournament of power. If they live, of course. But anyway... Him and Go Seventeen and Jiren face off, and we get to know a little bit about Jiren's backstory. And really, it seems like Jiren's backstory is just like Goku's, except if Goku did not have any Dragon Balls. Jiren, as a kid, his whole village got destroyed by some mysterious evil power, and then Jiren got taken over. Jiren became a student of this strong teacher. And along Jiren's journey, he began to gain friends who were strong and that could fight. And when this evil entity came back, Jiren and friends all went to go fight this evil entity. And the evil entity killed all of Jiren's friends, including his teacher. So Jiren tried to, he trained and he trained and he gained more. Well, he wanted to gather people again to fight this evil entity, but they were too scared. And so Jiren had to throw away his trust of, of all of his peers and had to depend on himself. And from then on, he continued on his path to become the strongest ever, the strongest who ever lived in all the universes. It is a very bland, detailless, not try hard at all backstory. And they could have just left Jiren as a mysterious strong motherfucker like he was way more badass just having his big ass round and big ass eyeballs without having to go into his backstory like that really could have waited that that three minutes that they put into it wasn't even three minutes it was like a minute and a half but those 90 seconds that they put into his backstory they really did you in a, a disservice and they needed to put they need to give him his own arc, honestly. They need to give Jiren and the Pride Troopers their own arc because they have you have some really interesting characters within that group, all with their own quirks and their own personality traits. And I'd like to know more about them. Like, how did the Ginyu Force become who they are? They're basically the Ginyu Force of Universe 11. Jiren being the Goku of Universe 11 if he had no Dragon Balls. Because if you look at Goku's backstory, how many of his friends died? Yamcha died, Tien died, Krillin died, Piccolo died. Who else? Vegeta died multiple times. No. <clears throat> Vegeta died. Everybody in the world died when Majin Buu killed them. Everybody in the world, well, when Majin Buu killed them twice, because he did his little, everybody died, full folly blast everywhere. And then he did his full supernova pink bomb that he threw into the earth and just exploded like nothing. So I'm pretty sure that if there were no Dragon Balls that existed, Goku's backstory would be a similar way. He would not be the kind, jolly person that he is now because he would be able to actually accept death and not just be like, oh, well, this person died. All I got to do is just beat him and I'll wish him back with Dragon Balls. Whereas Jiren, when all his peoples died... He just had to face it. He he cried about it. He cried about it in his backstory. And now he's just an evil, cold... Well, he's not evil, but he's a cold-hearted motherfucker. So they definitely need to... I, hopefully when Dragon Ball Super comes off hiatus, that they give the Pride Troopers their own arc. Or at, at least a, like a mini arc, like a Garlic Jr. type mini arc. I think that'd be great. And they need to get better. They need to... Take some time with writing these stories because this, that ever since it got, and I wouldn't even say ever, yeah, ever since it got announced that Dragon Ball Super is gonna go be on hiatus, this story feels very rushed, 
Very, very rushed. And the power scalings, they're just like, fuck it. We're just going to make good episodes. Like, 17 should not be as strong as he is. He should have got knocked out early. Very early. He got aired out by Piccolo. Well, Piccolo's my favorite character. But he got aired out by Piccolo. He got, he got absorbed by Cell. And now, with zero training, well, that we know of, with zero training, he's able to compete with gods? With gods of destruction? Like, come on. Get out of here with that. But anyway, that's my review of episode 127. I'll be back with you guys as soon as one episode 128 comes out. I'll be back with you guys for another review. Like and subscribe. I'll see you guys later.